recording. I am here with Deirdre Cole, who is the co-founder and co-artistic director of Highlands Ballet Company, and we're going to talk through some branding things. Um, thanks for helping me out, Dee Dee. Oh, and it's my pleasure. Thank you. I'm, I'm so excited to go through this process with you. Let me screen share right now with uh, everybody. You have the same page brought up, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, page two. Okay, step great. Two. So step two, yeah, uh, in the five steps to fundraising success, step two is building your brand knowledge. Mm -hmm. And these are the four questions that I use to arrive at the a place where I know who to ask for money uh, because you may have brand knowledge as far as uh, like marketing and communications but then how do you take that same knowledge and apply it to fundraising so that you are approaching individuals and businesses that you can get an easier yes from because mm -hmm. no one likes to spend their time getting a bunch of no's. I mean, the no's will happen, but let's, let's like cut down on them as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So um, Dee Dee, if we could, I want to go through each of these steps with you and ask you these questions and then we can kind of have a conversation about them as it relates to Highlands Ballet. Okay. Um, can you tell me a bit, of, uh, not me because I already know, but can you well, <laughs> share with everybody watching uh, a bit about Highlands Ballet Company and um, what you're, how you're structured Sure. Well, Highlands Ballet is a, is a nonprofit organization. It is um, the, hopefully, the uh, culmination of our feeder school, the Highlands Center for Ballet Arts. So as children study dance through us, then they attain a company status, and that is our nonprofit. Um, that company is designed to not only entertain our community, but also to provide a part of the classical arts that in, especially in our area are not um, uh, available, readily available. We are approaching 25 years old. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so we have some longevity uh, behind us. But I think that um, one, one reason why this uh, being part of this process with you, Becky, is important is that our Achilles heel is fundraising. Um, I feel like that, um, and our, our founder, my mom, she is, she's so fabulous. I mean, she's the most fabulous. She is fabulous. <laughs> fabulous on so many different levels, but you know, in the past, um, it's kind of like, you know, the field of dreams, you build it, they will come. It's not like that anymore. Yeah. It doesn't matter how, how altruistic you are. It doesn't matter the quality of the work that you do. You know, I, I can't choreograph it and they will come. Sorry, you're getting um, feedback <laughs> from, my, from my rats, from my little rat terrier in the background. But um, so it, it's a whole different ball game now mm -hmm. for any nonprofit in the performing arts, especially. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's different. So there's a lot of competition, even in our area, which is rural, small town oh. America. Uh, there are, in addition to yours, four other dance schools in a 20 minute driving radius. Right. We're the only nonprofit. Mm. Um, right. We're the only nonprofit, the Highlands Ballet. So I, I think that that, and I think that we're, we're, we're all fruit meaning that we're involved in dance, but we're different for you. So we're the only, yeah. you know, nonprofit, like company oriented um, group. The Highland Center for Ballet Arts has a 15% scholarship rate. Wow. And we have nothing, we don't offset that <laughs> with anything. Um, and so this is where we, we as an organization and our feeder school need to make improvements. So when you, uh, when you look at your budget, um, there. so question three on this is what am I raising money for and what is the goal amount? I kind of feel like maybe we want to start there in a sense because right. what, like, what do you raise? Do you raise money for scholarships or do you raise money for uh, productions? We raise money mainly for productions. But okay. I, feel, I feel like that that's where as an organization – we need to we need to arrive at a place to where raising money for productions is a well-oiled machine. Oh, okay. 
And then, then we're also raising money to benefit our community. Technically, quality productions should be considered a benefit to the community because it's mm -hmm. you should be able to come to a Highlands Valley production and that should be a substitute rather than going to New York or Atlanta or somewhere like that and seeing mm -hmm. a really wonderful, not only artistic, but on a technical level, a great performance. Um, mm -hmm. But there's all these other aspects that are equally important. Um, we also keep our performances the ticket price at a very affordable level. So in that way, we're serving our community. So coming to see a Highlands Ballet event is no more expensive than going to see a movie. Right. Uh, so. That's kind of amazing. <laughs> but, and that's a huge thing. So, you know, we're serving our community in that way that we're really trying to keep things capped, affordable to where it doesn't make it an elitist type mm -hmm. thing. Okay. Yeah. Fundraising that that's like has all these different subsets to all yes. of them. Well, exactly. And so and that's why I wanted to kind of clarify at this point if we're looking at raising money for scholarships then that's serving a different audience and a different purpose than raising money for productions. So, okay, keeping in mind then that we're raising money for productions. Let's do step or question 1. Who do I serve? So, so who do you serve in producing Highlands Ballet shows? As far as our demographic is concerned? Uh, yeah, we can talk about, I think when, when you're talking about a performing arts company, you've got two service sectors. You're serving your audience mm -hmm. in one sense, and you're serving your artists in another sense. So we could even break it down further. So who is, who is your audience who you serve? Um, well, it's, it's, it's mainly within a... Um, um, I apologize for all the, everybody's getting, the, <laughs> this, this, is, this is my life. <laughs> Dogs, the phone. Um, <laughs> you may have to edit that part or you can just let it go. This is yeah, why not? This is, this is our life. Yep. <laughs> um, that, that's a challenging question. Okay. Um, I, I, I would like to be serving my community at large mm -hmm. that I would like for any citizen of our, you know, especially I would think like a 50 mile radius to go, Oh, Highlands ballet. This is going to be a great night. Let's go out and see the ballet rather mm -hmm. than it being, you know, something only for the few and the select. Um, right. Again, it's a little off topic. We work really hard to make our shows accessible so they don't, so when someone watches it, doesn't know squat about ballet, mm -hmm. doesn't feel like it's above their head. Mm -hmm. And they can't, you know, it's kind of like going to the opera and you have no idea what they're saying. Yeah. You know, I, I want them to be, I want what we're producing to be able to serve any person mm -hmm. of any stature, any socioeconomic level, and they can walk away with a certain feeling. So, okay. I feel like we serve everybody. That's our goal. Right. We're reaching that goal. Right. And, and in a sense, though, if you <laughs> say you're serving everybody, you end up serving nobody. True. So, yeah. so let's try and focus it down. Your audience is, your audience tends to be local, right? Within maybe like a one hour drive. Do people drive an hour? Yeah. I actually have students that drive <laughs> over an hour to come to our okay. school. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a function of this area too. That you, I mean, you kind of have to drive an hour. Mm -hmm. um, although my my sister's from San the San Francisco area, and she's like, "What? You only have to drive an hour?" Oh, good for her. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> but um, so a local audience, and um, they tend to be. Um, they are are they already art supporters? They tend to be, but not, not necessarily from the pocketbook sense of things, but more mm -hmm. in that, you know, they have a, that's part of, you know, what they do. They go to the theater or they go to concerts. And so music, the arts in general are part of their life. So, right. yeah. Okay. And um, do they tend to be, well, you get a lot of parents. <laughs> 
yep. who come because you involve the, the kids. So you get a lot of parents and grandparents, people who are already sort of related to the company. Mm-hmm. Right. If when, um, by changing our venue of where two of our shows are per year, I think mm-hmm. it's opened up our audience to the north of where we're located. So now we're getting a little bit more of folks that aren't necessarily, you know, involved with our group specifically, but it's, it's, it's like a slow trickle. And I would yeah. love to open that up a little bit and at least, <laughs> at least be a pencil stream. Right. <laughs> that, that we're, we're getting folks that aren't necessarily directly involved. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, though, that you're starting to get that. And um, I'm sure that that'd be an interesting marketing discussion about, you know, like, how can you open that up more? Yeah. Um, now, let's talk. So we know we kind of know who your audience is. Um, now, let's talk about the artists you serve. So um, from the for the artists. Um, right. Tell me about them. Um, well, for the Highlands Ballet, we're, we're talking Young, young ladies, and sometimes, sometimes, uh, some, some young gentlemen, but maybe from the age of 10 and 11 up. Um, mm-hmm. We have several artists in residence uh, that are part of my faculty for the school. Um, so I, I guess really we're talking from maybe that tween, that 10 and 11 age, <laughs> sorry, oh, all the way to mid-30s. Okay. Right. Um, we also have a, a regular stable of guest artists that we bring in from outside. Um, a lot of the faces are, are repeats. Um, and so I, can, I consider them artists in residence. Okay. Uh, yeah. But they, they may not live here, but they are in our productions on a regular basis. They are professional mm-hmm. artists and they do get paid. So right there's mm-hmm. one fundraising thing. Yeah. Do. Yeah. Um, So we serve a a variety, but hopefully if I wanted to pinpoint it, Mm -hmm. I would say young people that are striving to be a professional level dancer. Okay. So students, but emerging artists. Yes. Emerging artists. Yes. Okay. Great. All right. Let's move to uh, question two. (laughs) Does your puppy need to go out? (laughs) Can I let her out? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So question number two, why do I serve them? Um, let's, talk, let's talk about the artists themselves. Why do you, why do you serve these, um, these students, these emerging dancers, emerging artist dancers? I firmly, and I know from my own life, I firmly believe that the study of classical ballet, classical arts, but classical ballet as well, because it's more, you know, your whole mind and body is immersed in that art. Um, I believe it makes them stronger people inside Mm -hmm. and out, not just stronger bodies. And I believe in what arts mean to their lives. I don't want to digress off of why why do I serve them? Um, Mm -hmm. Because they take this, even if they don't dance professionally, they take this into their lives and they spread it forth. And the Mm -hmm. arts are crucial to who we are as humans. Mm -hmm. I, and I just, to, to pass that, like passing the baton, you know, to those generations is just, it's a privilege. It really is. I mean, it has its moments, but day in, day out, it's a privilege. And so I, it's, and I, it's almost passing on that, dis, that sense of discipline. And um, what else did they, do they have, uh, get some resilience? Oh, they're very resilient. They learn to time manage. Um, we're having a little function for some of our kids tonight. I have a couple that can't come because they have to get their homework done. So they're, so they are ready for class on Monday. Um, but also, but it's also past those, those types of things, but more about the human spirit, uh, mm-hmm. the human condition. Um, and they learn so much about themselves. They become better parents. They, they hopefully will become better dancers, um, and in that they become a more productive, expressive and sensitive member of society. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, and, and some of the things that we've talked about outside of this purpose today, I think that's a, a yeah. big missing link that people do not know how to treat each other and talk to each other. And mm-hmm. you can't survive in a true classical ballet classroom with that kind of, uh, 
attitude. attitude. <laughs> yeah. 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 To say that word. Yeah. You, you learn how you learn how to negotiate yourself, your director, mm-hmm. um, with with graciousness. Now, if we look at audience, why do you serve the audience here? Uh, I think to, you know, to to bring to our area something that again they rarely get to see. Mm-hmm. Um. It's not brought to them on a level with taste, etiquette, uh, a certain artistic, um, a certain artistic standard. Not not to make us sound like that we are we're not elitist, but to strive to a certain level of excellence. I think that that kind of has its own spread out. Um, if that's yeah. Because we love what we do, mm-hmm. we love the art. We love. And the- it, yet we don't. We don't have a lot of ballet here. No. <laughs> like, no. if you want to go hear, you know, some guitar picking, that's fine. That's everywhere, but not a whole lot of ballet. So I think right. that's very cool that you you bring to this area an art form that isn't readily available. Right. Well, in in dance today, ballet today is a, a, it's a 360 degree art now. It's not just about what we think of as classical ballet, like Swan Lake, um, mm-hmm. Sleeping Beauty, The Nutcracker, that mm-hmm. it's, it, it is completely different now. It's beyond that. And so we, we strive to bring that culture from other big cities here. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be streamlined a little bit, so it is more specific to our region. Um, not everything works everywhere. Yeah, I wish it doesn't. So <laughs> we, we think about our audience and what their values are, and try to keep our guidelines within those yeah. values to, to hopefully draw them in and bring something different to their life for that evening or that afternoon that they might come to a performance. Great, awesome. So when we get now we're on question number three, what am I raising money for? And what is the goal amount? Um, you don't have to reveal your budget if you if you don't want to. Right. Um, but but we've already talked about, OK, we're raising money for a production. So we could put out a fictional, let's say five thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Just okay. I'm just throwing out a number. I have no idea what your budget is for your productions. Um, but. If we were to, I, I mean, I think around here, five thousand dollars might be a nice little starting point. Right. Uh, it, it varies from like you know we have a, a performance coming up in December. That production mm-hmm. has a little bit of a higher budget. Okay. Um, then let's say our May production mm-hmm. uh, is a little bit different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's um the, a big part of our budget is to bring quality guest artists in. Um, Mm -hmm. we do not bring female guest artists. It is not, we don't have to bless. Mm -hmm. We don't have to, our kids are strong. Um, but unfortunately we live in an area where we don't have us, um, you know, male dancers. And so that's a, that's a huge part of our budget, Mm -hmm. our our quality guest artists. And I'm, I'm pretty picky because I, I want those whoever I bring to also reflect a certain um, level of values that we have with our kids, Mm. um, that they are, they are part of the learning process and they're part of the success of our show. And if they're people that are difficult to work with, then it's not (laughs) going to make the show successful. So so I'm pretty picky. Um, and (laughs) I like to pay them. I don't, I don't pay top dollar, but I also don't pay, you know, I pay them well and take good care of them. Um, so they always want to come back. Good. Yes. So that is a huge, like for our December show, that's at least half of our budget. Okay, great. So you're paying, you're, you're raising money to pay guest artists primarily. Like that's, that would be the, the sort of focus on this. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then some, and then some of the, you know, funds as well go to, you know, reimburse, reimbursement, uh, everything from marketing to costumes that need to be replaced. Um, mm-hmm. for our, for our particular organization at this point in time, 
the artistic directors take no pay for mm -hmm. what we do. So we're volunteers than ourselves. Our whole organization are volunteers. Oof. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> So we'll uh, we'll talk about capital campaign fundraising at another. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but wow, um, okay. So we have an idea of who you serve, why you serve them, and what you're raising money for, and a kind of a goal amount. Mm -hmm. So question number four is is uh, what I find to be really sort of the linchpin and taking, taking all of this like a step further. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the people you serve, um, they directly benefit from you, mm -hmm. but then who benefits when the people you serve are doing well? So uh, our, who our, benefits? Our community at large. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Well, I think, I think I might could have a good illustration. So yeah. for our December production, we are offering four, four shows that are uh, in the middle of the day designed specifically for school students. Mm. So in other words, you know, the local elementary schools can, they can bring the whole school and, and come to a school show of that production. Um, years ago, uh, this production, we picked a, a classical, a classic, you know, piece of literature, something that is within the standard of learning in our state of Virginia, and mm -hmm. we built a ballet around it, and we almost have three shows already sold out. Wow. And, and it's not even Labor Day. Yeah. And that, that sounds like a lot of money, but it's not because, um, this is going to sound like a bunny trail, but so each kid is $3. Okay. If we were able to raise more money, we could offer it for free. Ah, yes. And they're serving your so, Okay, so there, let's, this kind of switches it up then. So if we, now that we've drilled down a bit, we've learned that number one, you serve local schools. Yes. Number two, why do you serve them? Because they don't have access to this kind of art form anywhere else in this area. So number three, what am I raising money for and what's the goal amount? I'm raising money to completely underwrite those tickets. And so the goal amount would be $3. I happen to know your, the theater that you're in seats 450. Right. So it would be like some quick mathing. Um, <laughs> three times 450 and then times three shows. So that'd be $4,050. Right. So, um, which doesn't cover the guest artists. Right, yeah. right. So this would be like, this would be a highly targeted funder. Like if we were to use this for the fundraising, mm -hmm. it would be a highly targeted fundraising effort to say, hey, we want to, so if, let's say you're paying your guest artists 5,000 as well. Mm -hmm. So if you were to create a campaign around raising $10,000, then what you would highlight is, the quality of the production, bringing in guest artists mm -hmm. and underwriting completely the cost of these schools being able to come right. see the production because that's an expense for you. Like yeah. you have to make that money somehow. You can either make it through a ticket sale or you can make it through donations. Mm -hmm. And so what I would take a look at is um, when we get to this now, question number four, who benefits when the people I serve are doing well? Who benefits when the kids at these schools get to see a high quality production? Right. And who cares about that? Maybe they don't care about Highlands Ballet, but right. they care about kids getting a good artistic education. You are very clearly engaged in an educational outreach effort with this you've got the history of your company and you've got demonstrated quality mm -hmm. so all of these things I know that there are companies out like local corporations that are headquartered here who would care about educational outreach right. more than they might care about the art form and you could definitely go after one of those corporations and say, here's our educational outreach program. Right. Well, and see, here's the 
here's how much it costs. Well, and in that way, see, it serves those companies well. Exactly. Well. So see, it's serving the child. It's mm -hmm. serving the company because then they're part of their community and everything from just like the brass tacks of business, whether mm -hmm. it's they have, you know, all these different organizations they're giving money to and they, that's tax write off and it's a this and it's a that, you mm -hmm. know, so it has multiple levels of how it serves. Exactly. Whether exactly. it's that child or that company or or that couple that came out that night and they had some escapism mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of hours, yeah. you know, so it's, it's, um, I think in the arts, true arts, um, that a lot of these, a lot of these questions, they're so multi-layered because arts, yeah. arts are deep and complex. And that's why mm. I'm so, I'm so long winded because it's, yeah. Like my brain just goes to 25 different places. Well, yeah, and I think it, having, uh, I, I think maybe I should create, um, like, this is very basic. Um, I think what I would, what I'll do is create another one that is arts specific mm -hmm. so that you can go down, like, okay, let's go down the audience path. Let's go down the artist path. Let's right. go, because it branches out a bit more than I think a lot of, say, like a social service agency might um, and yeah. so if we were, but I, I like that we've arrived at this really highly targeted place. Here's, here's what we've learned. Let's, let's make this highly targeted and kind of bring it all home. So number one, who do I serve? You serve, uh, you, you serve directly students. Mm -hmm. You serve students. Um, that's, let's talk about that being your audience, right? So you, you serve an audience of students. Why do I serve them? Because they don't have access to anything like this anywhere else around here. Uh, number three, what am I raising money for? And what is the goal amount? You're raising money to underwrite the cost of tickets so that more kids can come and see this for free. Mm -hmm. And the goal amount is $4,000, let's say. Now, who benefits when these students are doing well? What we've identified is corporations that have educational outreach as part of their corporate philanthropy. Mm -hmm. So they, it is their, their mission to give money to organizations that, that offer educational outreach opportunities. Right. So you are actually helping them because they're required to give this money away to a specific thing. You have the specific thing. So therefore you match up. Right. Right. In fact, you would be doing them a huge service by approaching them <laughs> yeah. and saying, I do this thing. Here's mm -hmm. who I serve. Here's why we do it. Here's what we're raising money for. Look, you give money to this. Right. <laughs> Here we are. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> And you're welcome. <laughs> and you're welcome. Uh, so the, does that all kind of um, fit together? It does. It, it does. I mean, that, that is, you know, um, streamlining it a little bit. Um, and I, I, th I think that for, again, to, for the purposes of not, sometimes, you know, you're, it can be so big that you can't mm -hmm. focus on one little thing. You know, mm -hmm. I think there's, there's other demographics to serve everything from the elderly to the mm -hmm. handicapped. There's so many different, but you know, for this discussion, this yeah. is, uh, for me, this is like one piece of the pie. Yes. Of the exactly. thing. It's one piece of the pie. And that yep. there are other groups that I would like to serve as well. Yeah. And you could do the same thing. You could do the same. I think when you go through this process, what you end up with is a, a proposal mm -hmm. right like there's there's your proposal outline here's who we serve here's why we serve them here's what we're raising money for here's how it benefits you right as the, per the person I'm asking for money from right uh, one of our shows public shows I would love to have underwritten specifically for the handicapped this is for adults a mm -hmm. public show the handicapped uh, the um, Oh, the socioeconomic level of folks that could not come mm -hmm. and the elderly. Yeah. You know, and to where it's basically a free show for mm -hmm. those demographics mm -hmm. of, of folks as well. 
you know, there are for profit retirement communities mm -hmm. that might subsidize something like that. Mm -hmm. So it was served it's, it's like a corporation. Yeah. yeah it's like a, co a corporation that runs for profit retirement communities. So they've got money mm -hmm. and they, you know, perhaps they would be willing to give a certain amount mm -hmm. to underwrite tickets, not just for their own people, but also that would then also cover Start maybe an aging sort of audiences. And yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, it is easy to get overwhelmed with, with all the different places it could go. Yeah. Almost like, if, if someone were to go through this process with this sheet of paper, it would almost be beneficial to print it like five times. Right. And, and be like, one is for audiences. One is for this person type of, mm -hmm. the one is for this. <laughs> right. And it will and then, or even have like, um, uh, you know, the set of materials that I would have to go to a corporation where we're targeting for children versus mm -hmm. a corporation that might be more willing to look at handicap, uh, handicap, um, people, elderly people, that it might be two different, almost a little bit. Part of the presentation would be the same, but mm -hmm. then part of it would change. Right. Um, but it, but it's almost like the same formula though. Yes, exactly. Well, Didi, thank you so much for joining me today for this and, and going through this process with me. And I hope that this has helped you to focus on a bit of a fundraising element that maybe you hadn't thought of. Oh, yes. Um, great. And of course, I'm here for you. I'm here for you always. Um, you. So if I can um, look back through some of my fundraising notes, uh, especially from, um, you know, just sort of general research I've done on, on the area and mm -hmm. companies that I happen to know prefer to fund educational outreach type things. Right. Um, or since we were talking programs for the elderly and, uh, and if, you know, if, if something pops into my head, I'll send that over to you. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Firefly right over to me. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>